Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. DeGange, and I am reporting for The Media Speaks. TheMediaSpeaks.com is where you can go. <clears throat> While I'm speaking of The Media Speaks, let me say really quick that I have been recently posting articles like crazy up there, written articles. So go and check them out. Let me know which ones are your favorite. And before we get started, also let me mention there are a lot of things going on at the Media Speaks. And one of those things is that every Saturday from, well, it's usually 2 o'clock, I'm in Ohio. We are on live on the air. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and go to Google and it's a live broadcast from Delight Court, Kyle and myself. And if you have not done so and not checked these videos out, I do post them on Facebook, but come join us live. Let us know what you think of the live show. It's all of us talking. Uh, usually we agree sometimes uh, to some of the uh, nuances. Sometimes we don't. And uh, it's not one of those talk over, yell over each other kind of shows. <clears throat> if somebody has a point, you know, we toss it out there. And these are these for you to evaluate. And that's why I have not been doing as many weekend shows um, I do more shows throughout the week, the more you watch, but I have not been doing weekend shows because of the two-hour Saturday broadcast. So go to The Media Speaks and enjoy. It's really good. All right, on to the news. This is from Christelle, uh, the behind-the-camera, the amazing Christelle. Um, I tell you what, I got a degree in uh, IMT, and a lot of it was video and lighting and whatnot, and she's taken like a duck to water to it. Um, she was going down the road listening to the worst radio station, perhaps, in, you know, you know any place that plays hip-hop. But, my point being, uh, John Tess was on it, and John Tess has some interesting things from time to time. I have listened to him. He doesn't drive me crazy. Um, these are some good news, and I wanted to get to it since the last show was the good news show. <clears throat> Vitamin C sales have went up. All forms of emergency vitamin C capsules and natural cold medicines like umka. If you don't know what umka is, look it up. It is wonderful for colds. Um, and this has led to more natural sales. Uh, it's making agricultural equipment go through the roof. And there's some information at Agco. Um, it says your agricultural agency. It's dated Tuesday, May 1st, 2012. Agco reports first quarter results, and that's even from a bit of before, so I mean the new numbers are just coming in, and it's showing that those of us that worry about these sorts of things and want to get some of these toxins that are in, the, uh, in, the, in our food and processing out of our lives, it seems to be having a big uh, movement, and thankfully it's also going good for the economy, which is rare these days. Good job, Christelle. This is from Common Dreams. This is a bit dated, but I had to get to it no matter what. Former advisor Obama as ruthless and indifferent to the rule of law as Bush. Americans unaware of the scale of the drone program and the destruction that it has caused in their name. This is, uh, you know, whenever someone gets blown away with a drone in another country, if they're not one of the bad guys, and I do know that there are terrorists in the world, not to the degree that our government says that there is, but there are. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're taking them out and maybe 10 people that are perfectly innocent right with them. And that is ridiculous. Um, and we're paying for it. Every time some kid gets blown away, every time somebody's mother or some wedding gets blasted with one of these drone weapons, it's a death that you and I help pay for. So it's a big deal. A former security advisor for Barack Obama now says of the Pentagon's targeted drone program that it is counterproductive and is encouraging a new arms race and has killed far more civilians than has been acknowledged. <clears throat> In an article from January 2013 issue of the journal Internal Affairs, Michael Boyle, a LaSalle University expert on counterterrorism who served as an advisor on the Obama campaign's counterterrorism export group from July of 07 to November of 08, <clears throat> writes that the Obama administration's increasing reliance on drone attacks is having adverse strategic effects on and that have not been properly weighed against the tactical gains associated with killing terrorists, uh, The Guardian reports. I want to read a couple of these paragraphs, so stay with me. This is important. Again, we are paying to blow up people now, aren't we? <clears throat> Undeclared war by Congress. 
Although Obama pledged to end the so-called war on terror, Boyle continues, instead he has been just as ruthless and indifferent to the rule of law as his predecessor. While President Bush issued a call to arms to defend a civilization against the threat of terrorism, President Obama has waged his war on terror in the shadows, using drone strikes, special operations, and sophisticated surveillance to fight a brutal covert war against Al-Qaeda and other Islamist networks. But he continues, the consequences can be seen in the targeting of mosques or funeral processions that kill non-combatants and tear at the social fabric of the reason, regions where they occur. No one really knows the number of deaths caused by drones in these distant, sometimes ungoverned lands. No matter, you can be a raving neocon here. <clears throat> the problem is we are sending weapons to a country that we did not declare war on through Congress, as our Constitution says that we should, and we're just blowing, you know, and if there's a terrorist in the duplex that I live in, well, they're going to blow the whole damn duplex up. And if that doesn't outrage you, then maybe, you know, maybe you are in the wrong country. Maybe you really are. Um, this is from Alt Market. Kindergarten suspended for bubblegum terrorism. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to read much of this story. I wanted to get to it for a point. Um, a five-year-old girl was suspended from school earlier this week after she made what the school called a terroristic threat. Her weapon of choice, a small Hello Kitty automatic bubble blower. The kindergartner who attends Mount Carmel Area Elementary School in Pennsylvania, don't ever let your kids go there, caught administrators' attention after suggesting she and a classmate should shoot each other with the bubbles. Well, I'm not going to go into them. They're on info wars all over. There are, every day, some new story about kids getting busted for making gun gestures and uh, all of that. Let me tell you what's going on here. I'm going to give you a correct view you haven't gotten. It's been not so much this little girl, but the older kids. I went to a school that was almost sadistic in how they punished you. Um, they would punish, they, they, would, they would beat you with a board for being late to a class. The school district I went to was insane. It was run by, and I'll name names, lunatics like uh, both of the Mr. Millers that worked at Layman should never be allowed to be around children under any circumstances. Um, was I sexually abused? No. But they got off on beating children for any reason they could get, and it happened all over the scum school I went to. Well... If something like this had existed then, I'd have been on it. Here's what the older kids are doing. If they put a gun on their computer as a screensaver, which happened, or a desktop of some kind, they're going to suspend you. They're going to look foolish, and you're going to get days off. And if you have cool parents, the parents are going to side with the kid. Now, my, my dad probably would have that fit, but... If they don't catch this, is what I'm saying. Kids can get a free ride home, so to speak. And you're going to find this more and more. And I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Teenagers, download pictures of guns on your computer. Talk about guns. Bring water guns to school. Because that goes back to what I said before. If everybody forces the government to do what they what we want them to do by refusing to obey and to capitulate, then we will defeat them. So children, do me a favor, download all the gun crap you can get, wear guns on your t-shirt, make them get rid of so many of you out of that school that they start losing money from the funding. This is how we fight back. Yeah, Uncle Sam, you want to indoctrinate the children? Tune into the correct views and I'll indoctrinate a few children. Bingo! Um, absent Hello Kitty, I I'm done. All right, investmentwatchdogblog.com. This is wonderful news. Are you a libertarian? Are you an anarchist? And by that, I don't mean the ones who believe in survival of the fittest. I mean an actual anarchy that could functionally run. Um, I'm personally a libertarian. Check this out. This is wonderful news. Wonderful, wonderful news. This is what happens when you stick together. This is what happens when you turn Rihanna and Kesha off. This is what happens when you reunite. Europe breaks up, bound to happen, will send the world into the next great recession or depression. In American football, there's a concept best described as fatiguing in the defense, where the opposing team's offense is so good that the defenders finally get overwhelmed. 
We are fast approaching this point with global governments and the rotten carcass of the Cold War pre-internet economy that they deem bound and determined to keep propped up. Catalina's parliament approved a declaration of sovereignty. Beautiful. They told the big banks and the new world order to go and get bent. They told them to go drop the soap in the shower. Did you get it? They left. They refused to put up with it. The proclamation defines the province of northern Spain as legal and sovereign political entity and start down the road to self-determination. Yeah, let the Islamist nutcases, and I don't mean the normal Islamists, I mean the nutcases. Let them have it. Let all the socialism and swine and New World Order uh, tactics and people take over Spain because they left. Yeah, da, 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 love it. The move was celebrated by the provincial president of Catalina, Arthur Moss, driver of Caitlin Sovereignty. That is wonderful news. I'm going to give you the last two paragraphs. The Catalan Parliament approved on Wednesday a declaration of sovereignty that allows you to start the process of implementing the right of self-determination of the Spanish province through a referendum. The Declaration of Sovereignty and the Right to Decide, the people of Catalina determines, begin the process of realizing the right to decide for citizens and politi and, yeah, decide for citizens and citizens of Catalina can collectively decide their political future according to a Reuters report. Beautiful. This is what the New World Order deserves, and I am delighted that this happened to Spain. And I'm more delighted for the people of Canada. Wonderful. Welcome to the, the, the human race, away from the uh, socialist scum that are taking over Spain. Um, Ahmadinejad, now be Iran's first. Day after Iran claimed that it successfully blasted a monkey into space, its president offers to become his country's first astronaut. Well, that would just be the second monkey sent into space. Because, Ahmadinejad, you're not really a human being. You're more like an ape. So I don't know if that's really going to count, but I appreciate your bravery. For people that don't know, I think America needs to stay the hell out of Iran's affairs. And I think Ahmadinejad is a piece of human filth. I think he is one of the worst leaders in the world today, and those two beliefs are not mutually exclusive. I don't think it's any, Ameri any of America's business, so I'm with Ron Paul there, but this man is scum. Iranian President Mohammad Ahmadinejad has revealed his dream to be his country's first astronaut. Ass. He put the ass in astronaut. He said he was willing to sacrifice his life for Iran's space program. We can only hope which aims to send a man into space by 2020 and put an astronaut on the moon by 2025. Didn't say anything about bringing him back, so I mean, that's a hope too. Just to the moon. I'm ready to be the first Iranian to be sacrificed by my scientists. Well, if the way you handle a nuclear power plant is any indication, you are going to be sacrificed. By the scientists of my country and go into space, even though I know there are a lot of candidates, state news agency INRA reported him as saying, well, it looks like Ahmadinejad is going to be the second Iranian monkey flown into space. Good for him. U.S. News, the last thing I want to get to, I love these stories, and I plan on getting to something on the Saturday show about the universe being a computer simulation and how this isn't craziness anymore. This is now becoming mathematical fact from some of the most respected universities in the world, including uh, Germany. I'm going to get to that Saturday, so make sure you tune in. In the meantime, fossil older than oxygen found on, on Earth. Fossil older than oxygen on Earth found in Australia. The 3.5 billion year old fossil could help scientists discover microbes on Mars. That is wonderful news. For those of you that care about the space and all that, like obviously I do, we are this close from proving that there was life on Mars. I mean, we are right on it. Either that or there was life that was on a meteor, like some kind of bacteria, I don't know, some kind of microbe that crashed on Mars. That could also be the case. Um, researchers have found fossils of bacteria that are nearly 3.5 billion years old, believed to be the oldest visible fossils ever uncovered. The fossils found in northwest Australia's Pabera region are from a time before oxygen existed on Earth. It's probably when Dianne Feinstein was born. It goes on. 
and are from just one billion years after Earth formation, according to Old Dominion University, University's Nora Nofke, N-O-F-F-K-E, one of the researchers who worked on the project. The fossil's imprints found on sandstone that was formed when microbes interacted with rock sediment. Scientists have discovered older rocks, but Nolfk says these rocks have eroded to the point where traces of life are all but impossible to find. I'm going to go on, one more paragraph, then go look this up. I can confidently say that the structures we're working on cannot be found on older rocks until now. There has been nothing that is this well preserved, Nofke says. There are some that are much older, but they experience metamorphosis. Anything that's on them has been overprinted, and it's difficult to reconstruct what was there. So let's face it. Is the world a big simulation? I'll get into that Saturday, but I'll say this. The world is opening up mysteries to us at a level unprecedented in times prior. And I think that we're just scratching the surface here, to use an overused cliche, I guess. But... All of this is tying in together, and little by little by little, creationists are being proven true. Now, I'm not saying necessarily the ones that believe that the earth was created in a literal three days. My personal view is you can't have a day before you have the sun. So I don't think you meant literal days. If someone says that you have cancer, you're in your last day, they don't mean your last day. So I think that's what it means. But we are looking more and more and more at scientific proof of a creator. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Can you donate to this show? I'm trying to get a better computer. And if you can, then that's what I will be putting it towards. If you own a business or a charity and you would like to advertise here, your rates are going to be more reasonable here than anywhere else. And go, go to my channel. There are thousands of people that visit this site, not to mention the media speaks as well. And lastly, I plan on entering the Alex Jones $100,000 contest, but I have a computer that is an abacus. So if you own a very nice computer that can run Adobe Premiere and that will hold very, very, very large MTS files and render them at some decent time, get a hold of me in my comment line because if you can let me use that computer, if I win the $100,000, I'll give you a quarter of it. How's that? If I don't win, you'll have my gratitude. Thanks for listening to The Correct Views, friends. Good night and God bless you.